Well, good afternoon. I'm Reverend David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we take another look at sacred synchronicity. Now, this is something that Bishop Jim talked about in our Sunday service this week, but I just wanted to give a couple of examples of how I've seen this play out in my own life. So just as a reminder, I want to give you that definition uh, for sacred synchronicity that we saw on Sunday, and that is this, the simultaneous occurrence of events which appear significantly related, but have no discernible causal connection except the meaningful and purposeful working of the Holy Spirit. So I've got two examples in my life uh, that I can think of off the top of my head, and there's many, many examples that I have of this uh, happening. Uh, but I'm going to share one from my vocational ministry life and also one from my personal life. So uh, the first one is an example in my vocational ministry life. Now, when I was commissioned as an elder in the United Methodist Church, which is, you can see this picture on the left here of that happening, um, I was assigned as a pastor to two churches in Mississippi in the Seashore District. And, and as a new pastor, I had already been in ministry for many years, helping with youth, helping with music, uh, being an associate pastor and that kind of a thing. Uh, but this was my first time really serving as the senior pastor for two churches. And so there came a time in my ministry life where I thought, you know, I just need the Holy Spirit to give me some more wisdom, to give me some more help, to guide me in this pastoral journey that I was on. And I had already graduated with my Master of Divinity um, at Asbury Theological Seminary, but there's a difference between the book knowledge that you gain in seminary and the practical wisdom and understanding that you gain um, kind of on the job, right? And that's with any vocation. So I was praying about, you know, in my morning prayers, Lord, you know, send your Holy Spirit to help me uh, to become a better pastor. Give me some insights that are going to really help me that I can really put to practical use. And just about that time, uh, a good friend of mine uh, from afar, Rod Weimer, sent me this book, The Ultimate Calling, uh, by a long-term pastor friend that he knew, uh, Roland Boyce, or Roland Boyce. And in that book is basically 25, 30 years of experience in pastoring and all the little things to help you uh, in your shepherding. So that's why it's called The Perils and Privileges of the Pastorate. And so the interesting thing was, I mentioned this um, to Rod, and right at that time, Rod's like, wow, that's crazy, because I've been reading this book, and I'm going to send you this book. I was just thinking about sending you this book. And, then, and so, you know, there was that sacred synchronicity of me coming into a time in my life where I felt like I needed more practical wisdom on the job training, and then the Holy Spirit sending me uh, through another one of his children from another location, a book that was, you know, addressed exactly for that topic. And uh, another way that this sacred synchronicity played out is as I was ordained as a deacon here uh, at Holy Communion Church, this is actually one of the books that Bishop Jim chose to be part of my formation here. And so this book has been used by the Holy Spirit uh, not just for me, but also for Jim, and we've talked about it, we've discussed it, and so this is an example in my vocational ministry of one of these occurrences of sacred synchronicity. Well, it doesn't just happen in our vocational life. The Holy Spirit is operating in every aspect of our life. We can't really look at our life like it's a waffle where the Holy Spirit puts a little syrup here and a little syrup there. No, our life is more like a bowl of pasta, you know, straight out of Italy where we got sauce all in the whole thing, you know, and so all the noodles are getting covered. The Holy Spirit just pours his grace out in every aspect of our life. And so how does that look like for me? Well, here's an interesting thing that happened. When we were praying the Holy Spirit Novena on day seven, we were praying this, Come, O Spirit of counsel, help and guide me in all my ways, that I may always do your holy will. Incline my heart to that which is good, turn it away from all that is evil, and direct me by the straight path of your commandments to that goal of eternal life for which I long. Amen. So we were focusing on a particular gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of counsel, 
And that day at Mass, Bishop Jim was talking about um, how sometimes we can fail to get counsel when that counsel would make it so much easier. And he talked about going into Home Depot and Lowe's and wandering around and, and looking on different shelves for things. And finally, somebody comes along and says, hey, can I help you find something? And they show them right where it's at, and it saves them all kinds of time. And what he was saying was, how much time would be saved if we just got counsel? Well, later that day, uh, I went out to the patient angler fly shop to pick up some flies because I was planning on going fishing that weekend. And I got in there and I said, hey, Pete, you know, I'm going out. I'm going to go down to Mecca Flats. I really want to catch this salmon fly hatch. You know, what flies do I need? Hook me up. Tell me where I need to go. Tell me how to do it. And I tell you what, man, uh, Pete from the patient angler fly shop, I got to give you a shout out. Thank you so much. Because what Pete did was he, he said, OK, well, you're going to need this fly. So he told me the fly I was going to need. He's like, and you're going to need to go, you know, to this particular area. And when you cast, don't cast out in the river, cast up the bank and really try to get it up under the trees because uh, if you don't lose some flies trying to get it right up under those trees, you're not going to be where the fish are because the fish like to hang out underneath those trees to get the bugs as they fall off the tree. And so he was giving me all this great counsel on the day that we were focusing on getting counsel for things and how that counsel can help us. Uh, and then, of course, he went the extra mile. He said, man, go out to your van, bring your flies in. I'm going to help you out. And I brought them in. We dumped them all out on the table. And uh, he proceeded to kind of help me arrange my bugs and my flies by developmental stage, by color, by size, and the whole bit. And he just gave me that counsel I needed to be successful out on the river. So I got out to the river uh, the next day with that counsel, armed with that counsel. And I broke... Um, a skunk that I had been fishing. I hadn't caught anything since February, right? And, uh, and it's June. And so, bam, I got on the river. I found the salmon fly hatch. These bugs were calling all over me. And uh, almost every time I cast out, there was something trying to get at my get in my fly, and I discovered some more weaknesses in my fishing. That is, I need to learn to set the hook better, but I caught, you know, fish, and I just I had a great time. So uh, this is another example where that sacred synchronicity comes into play, where the Holy Spirit has just arranged things. And if you're just, you know, where you need to be at the right time to get that counsel uh, that you need for something as simple as fly fishing, that might seem like, well, hmm, that's, that kind of seems like something the Holy Spirit wouldn't get involved in. But really, Sabbath is such an important part of our life and unwinding, de-stressing, and having that time with God is a big part of my life. So when I go out in the mountains and I'm fishing, it's not just really about fishing. Um, it's about a time that I have with God in a Sabbath. And so the Holy Spirit was helping my Sabbath to be more productive through Pete and Patient Anger Fly Shop. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to try to be a blessing for Cancer with Compassion. So um, as you know, this Wednesday night, we're going to have our final dress rehearsal for our Cancer with Compassion dinner fundraiser, the Ponderosa Purloin. I'm not going to get stuck in that accent today, but if you haven't signed up yet, this is going to be the last chance you have to sign up this week because our dinner is going to be on the 15th at 6.30 p.m. right here at Holy Communion Church. We've got a Wild West theme. Tate and Tate Catering is going to be bringing our meal. You're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be a real blessing. We have lots of raffle items, and like we said before, everything that's given is going to be matched by an out-of-state donor uh, up to $20,000. So please, please give what you can and let's be a blessing to them. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today for our another look at sacred synchronicity. Have a blessed day and a pleasant tomorrow. Thank you.